We uh, welcome all of you uh, at this uh, meeting with you. We have been meeting all of last week and this week, and uh, much of the uh, questions have been uh, on uh, our uh, epidemic, and today we are privileged to um, welcome the Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand, who has uh, come specially to uh, talk to to us uh, about the status of the epidemic. And uh, I have assured him uh, that the assistance provided by his government has helped us greatly with uh, our campaign uh, for the mass uh, vaccination of our people that uh, brought uh, our coverage uh, high, very high. Uh, presently, about 92 percent. And we are continuing uh, our program of vaccination, although uh, we continue to remain uh, uh, doubtful that uh, some still resist to come forward, and we look forward to catching uh, the rest when we um, meet next week and pass the uh, law on compulsory vaccination of uh, children and school, all those attending school, so as to ensure that we are completely uh, uh, free of the of this uh, illness uh, to occur in Samoa. And so, uh, in respect of the of the uh, period of uh, the emergency, uh, the cabinet will decide uh, tomorrow evening, as it is now one month uh, since we are in a state of emergency and we have considerably uh, uh, raised the coverage of our vaccinated uh, people. So the, um, uh, the crisis point, I think, uh, is already passed and we should uh, uh, decide on that by tomorrow afternoon when the Cabinet uh, meets. Uh, Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, first of all, it's our uh, privilege to be here as a New Zealand delegation with my colleague, the Honourable uh, William Seal, and um, who's our uh, Minister for Pacific Affairs. As you know, we have a treaty of friendship, and when a friend in this context is in need, uh, our country is uh, intent on stepping up and helping out. We're here to convey our uh, serious condolences for the tragedies of so many families here and to say that uh, we stand ready on every occasion to provide the resources and the help that's required to help out and uh, when it's all over I trust that we have uh, as a uh, neighbouring collection of countries around the Pacific uh, been able to take from this ex uh, lessons to learn a lessons to be put in place elsewhere as well. Uh, there are a lot of dimensions to a tragedy like this, and I suppose the most important one is to focus on remediation, repair, and uh, uh, dare, I t dare I take it, cure and solutions, rather than a thing called blame, which the, is the plenty of some to do. So it's our privilege to be here. As I say, uh, I'm delighted to hear the Prime Minister say that the worst looks like it's over, uh, but there will be help required for a long time for some of these families, and my country stands ready to assist and do the best it possibly can.
Questions? Uh, just uh, one last point, and that is in relation to uh, the babies uh, that are withheld uh, by our health authorities uh, in accordance with their own uh, uh, process uh, until the pathologist is here to uh, carry out the, the normal uh, checks uh, before they are released uh, for burial and uh, we expect that to take place very shortly when uh, we have a uh, pathologist uh, 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 selected and uh, arrive here for, for that purpose. So without uh, further ado, perhaps uh, we now invite any questions you may have. I would like to thank you very much. I believe the entire population of Samoa are very grateful for you being here and also New Zealand's assistance to all of our people who are suffering from this measles epidemic. And my question is, does New Zealand feel sorry for introducing the measles to Samoa? Uh, can I uh, respond to that? I think I have uh, answered that many, many times uh, <coughs> when it was posed to me. Uh, every country follows uh, the same process. Uh, you feel your your uh, your forms, uh, immigration, and uh, the same thing when we fly from here to New Zealand. So, and we are required, uh, or rather, we require all those to come to declare whether they are sick or not, what kind of sick, uh, sickness, so that we can um, treat them uh, uh, when they arrive here. We have similar, a similar action taken on one Ebola volunteer that came from Australia. Fortunately, we were informed, and so we quickly uh, quarantined the person this is some um, uh, five or six years ago, and uh, the next plane that arrived to uh, to fly back to Australia, we took her on board and fly out. Uh, and uh, that is a kind of threat that is faced by any country, uh, because we depend on the honesty of those who um, reveal that they are infected. Well, you asked me as well, and can I just say this, that uh, before I was a politician, I was a lawyer. And when you're going to make an allegation, you better be able to join all the dots up so that when you land, you're landing on the truth. And we are far too soon in this process to be able to support such a statement that you've just made. Uh, that is something that uh, will take serious forensic work and may be impossible to answer. But, of course, you're in the media, and I've seen that before. So, if you're okay. Papa Samaria, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand, I understand you have met our Prime Minister and discussed the outbreak and the outcome of the uh, mass vaccination in the last two days last week. What else your government can uh, provide in order to uh, continue uh, the uh, mass vaccination program for Samoa? As the Prime Minister alluded to the Parliament sitting next week, there will be a legislation to be tabled and Parliament will urgently uh, endorse it for the mass vaccination to be a compulsory one starting next week. What else are New Zealand governments providing? Well, to join up with other countries, <coughs> and it's been quite, uh, uh, what's the word, it's inspiring to see countries like Japan as part of this process, a whole lot of other countries, but to join up with them and provide all the resources that Samoa needs, not now, not just next year, but into the future. And then in the big picture, to have better planning to our mutual benefit on the big health demands and requirements that Samoa faces going into the future. This was a program we were already working on before this uh, tragedy, uh, tragic event arose. 
but we're not forestalling it. We get back on, we get back on the plan to put that into place as soon as we possibly can. And uh, you know, as we as we speak, there are other more, there are specialised teams who are being rotated, who are coming part and parcel of this fight back on the measles uh, outbreak here. And uh, we'll not rest up until, and I know the Samoan government will not rest up until we're utterly and totally on top of it. Well, I saw from your earlier um, visit this um, afternoon, um, I believe you stopped by at the Yokomoema yes. District Hospital where the medical team from New Zealand is stationed. Uh, did you manage to talk with them and any feedback from the team here? Well, we came, um, Minister Seal and, and my team came to have a look at what's going on, to speak to the uh, medical staff and all those who are helping out, to try and grasp whether they need any other resources. But from what we uh, saw, it was very inspiring to see people putting a care package together like that. They must have had tragic weeks when they were dealing with some possible and difficult problems where people were arriving virtually dead on arrival. But in the end, uh, uh, we were very inspired by the zeal and the vision and the compassion of that uh, medical team and those medical teams. And it's cause for us to go back and report to our government that this money is seriously being well spent. I was just before the last question, can I just say, uh, I got some good news as well, because Samoa is as much uh, a possible victim of tsunami as any other Pacific island. And this week, out of uh, Wellington on a boat called Tangaroa, we launched the early warning system for the Pacific with respect to the tsunami. So these uh, boys that will be in the water, anchored to the bottom of the sea, uh, when an earthquake happens where a tsunami is triggered off, it'll give an early warning system, not just to the Pacific Island countries like Samoa, but indeed my own country. And I can tell you with what uh, a sense of crisis we learnt that the system that was in place before had been allowed to run down and we spent every day we possibly could to get the placement in place and so huge relief but as I speak to you that a boat's winning its way towards Samoa to place one in the vicinity of this uh, of, the, of these islands as well. I just thought I'd say that Prime Minister because you've got some good news as well to pass on. Yeah, uh, I had uh, responded uh, very favorably to uh, the Deputy Prime Minister <coughs> for the simple and very good reason that most of our earthquakes uh, had occurred uh, in the south side uh, directly within the vicinity of the Tongan Trench and uh, so that would be one of the most appropriate uh, underwater areas where this uh, equipment would be uh, located. For your information, the Tongan Trench uh, extends uh, right into a few hundred miles out of uh, the Deputy Prime Minister's village and my village. So we are the most uh, likely affected area uh, when a tsunami uh, occurs. And as you know, uh, that's the districts, uh, those are the districts which uh, uh, were damaged uh, uh, the most, and most of the dead came from these areas. Last question? Oh, what do you think? Could New Zealand have done more to prevent the measles outbreak? Let me give you the, my honest answer. That's something that uh, will depend upon future investigation with respect to sustainable evidence. Uh, to just stand here and brush it aside as though it's of no moment would be the wrong thing to do, but to admit it would be the wrong thing to do do as well because we just don't have the evidence and uh, even if we do find out the evidence how will it help these families now but our job is could we have done more we did we did all we possibly could when we heard about it but on the other question as with the question that came from over here let's see what the evidence says 
before we rush to judgment and make a mistake. Uh, and to add on to the issue, you know, even Samoa couldn't do more with the many, many, many encouragement uh, that we had given to those who firmly believed that the appropriate cure for measles is not the vaccine, but from our traditional healers. Even right up to now, there are still people uh, that uh, uh, prefer to do that than to come to take the, the vaccine. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's just one thing. There are 10 million measles cases in the world. The source of what happened here is not known at this point in time.